be really honest with you, I'm not super happy with the way this is working out. Hello and welcome to the boat shed. My name is John and this boat behind me is Antidote. And I'm an engineer and a sailor with the dream of fixing up this old boat to go sailing around the world. Now we've got a lot of work to do first. Now you might remember this old hatch that we pulled off the boat several weeks ago. Today we're dealing with this, stick around. When I removed that hatch a while ago, my intention was initially to replace it just as it was. Now after talking with a few of you, the viewers, as well as current and past owners of this exact boat, I have a couple of different ideas. So I'll go through those with you in a little bit, but first let's check back in on the work we did last time. In preparation for dealing with this hatch, we put some new glass down here on the bow, and when we left, it was just covered in peel ply. So now let's get that all cleaned up and see how it turned out. It is officially fall, and so we're operating on the margins of the seasons and the slow epoxy that I used for this requires 60 degrees Fahrenheit minimum temperature to continue to cure. So I put this sleeping bag over it, keep it warm. And now it's gonna be important for me to remember this sleeping bag is only for boat work. Otherwise, I'll be very uncomfortable the next day. Now you'll notice we have around here some trimmings of some of the glass that was on the inside perimeter here. So this I cut off last night late with just a headlamp on and an X-Acto knife because getting to it early before it fully cures, you can take it all off super easily. And now it's gonna require sanding to trim it up any further. So really happy we did that. I see a couple of areas here where I have some epoxy that came down and that's gonna unfortunately come with a bit of blush. So we will have to just scrape that quickly with a Scotch-Brite pad and soap and water. In the future, I would probably want to put some tape over that just to make sure that if anything ran down, because I didn't anticipate that and put peel ply there, not a big deal. I also put a layer of plastic over this last night to make sure it wouldn't stick to that sleeping bag. And you can see it's definitely put an interesting texture on the peel ply. I hope that didn't cause dry spots in there, but we'll just have to wait and see when we pull this peel ply off. Right away, I can feel there's way more stiffness in that laminate than there was before, so that's good. Anyway, let's get to what we're here for. Overall, this is looking really good. I do see a few spots though that almost look like they might be air bubbles, which surprises me a bit because I thought I was very careful with the fin roller yesterday to roll all the bubbles out, but I might have missed a few spots in my haste. So we're gonna clean up the blush on here, and then we're gonna start working on this hatch solution. While that's drying, let me tell you what I'm thinking about doing with this hatch right here. Now I'm looking at it right now and it is literally two feet or less apart from the hatch immediately behind it that serves the head. I've talked to a lot of the current owners and past owners and just some people in general and the consensus seems to be get rid of it. I think that the added benefit of having the access directly above the storage anchor locker area is nice, but for the extra leaking potential, the cluttered deck, the consensus seems to be get rid of it, make the deck nice and strong, accessible, and you'll be pretty happy. I think that's what we're gonna do. Well, it is what we're gonna do because by the end of this video, we'll have made some progress in that direction. So <laughs> let's hope that happens. So my plan is to basically cover it, core it with foam, and then I will leave most of the structure intact. So if I ever do decide, hey, I really wish I had that hatch back, it'll be a lot easier going that way than if I put the hatch in and decide, hey, I really don't want this here, that's a lot more work. The one complaint that seems to come up from people that have deleted this hatch is that it does make things a little more damp in that forward area. So perhaps a venting solution would be good, maybe a Dorade vent would be appropriate to ventilate the anchor locker, sail bag storage area. I'd be curious to hear from you if you're out there and you have a vent that far forward. I don't typically see Dorade vents that far forward. I'm sure they exist, 
Now, if you don't know what a door aid vent is, they typically look something like this. So these large curved pipes are designed to let air into the boat and in theory, not water. In a perfect world, the water that comes through drains out the bottom and then the air has to travel up to the top of this pipe and then down into the boat. Now, Antidote has six of these types of vents and they all have a stainless steel cover that can be screwed in place of the Dorade door cowl. There are still a few leak paths into these though and there is nothing, at least on Antidote, on the inside to fully seal off that vent pipe. So if I was going to install a vent like this on Antidote, I would probably want to have another sealing mechanism on the inside, another fail safe, since this is a very wet part of the boat. If you've seen a solution like this implemented before, or maybe you even have some very far forward mounted door aid vents, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. So I think the plan here is going to be to fill in this area with a piece of 1708 first. And I'm gonna actually laminate it downstairs on the bench and then we'll install it. And so because this area has a crown to it, we're gonna lay it up flat one layer and then we'll actually bend it to shape in here and glue it in place. At least that's my idea. So that way the bottom skin will be established in there. It'll be all sealed up and then it'll have the right crown to it, hopefully close enough. And then we can stick the foam in on top, get this roughly fair and then put foam over the whole thing as we move back on the bow here. No surprise here that the template closely matches the cutout that we had out of there because I did cut this just slightly undersized. And although it is not a perfect fit, I think it'll be just fine. And we're just gonna do a hand layup for this because it doesn't need to be perfect. It'll come out pretty nice and flat. I've stretched some plastic tight across the table, so I think we'll get a pretty good result. And this is a piece of laminate that I used that vinyl ester on to make sure it was still good because it's been sitting for a little bit. And you can see there is some flex to that. So we're gonna be relying on that flexibility to get the shape fair. So we're gonna lay it up straight, let it cure, and then bend it to get that gentle curve so it lays down nice and fair. Let's say hi to a couple of the new Patreon crew members that really help keep this channel humming along. If you're interested in some behind the scenes updates and ad free videos, then you can check out the Patreon link in the description down below. The folks whose names are appearing on the screen now go the extra mile to keep this channel moving and I couldn't do it without you. Thanks all so much. Back to the video. Well, perhaps another lesson learned there. The plastic that I was using on the bottom of the table was not compatible with the vinyl ester resin because it started to melt. So I haven't had that happen to me before. Two options, I guess now, we could either use epoxy using the same method, or I think I've got something downstairs that would work to lay up some glass. Unfortunately, that piece is toast. I've already folded it up, it's gone. We'll try again. Take two, and we are back in the shop. Let's give this another try. Today we've got some packing tape on the table. I remember that's how I did my little test piece and it worked just fine. So trying to use that plastic film, I thought it was a good idea. I didn't check compatibility with the resin. So make sure you do that. Make sure you know it's compatible with everything you're trying to use. Gonna get started again. I gotta cut a new piece of fabric here, but we'll get that all sized up, laminated. Then I'm gonna have some breakfast while that cooks up and then we can get back to work putting it in the boat. Well, that worked a lot better the second time. So you'll actually notice here the glass, I cut it slightly smaller than the original template. And that's because the pocket that it's gonna get installed into on the bottom, the edges actually round up a little bit. And so in order to get it as low and flat as possible, I thought we would cut it a little smaller. So hopefully that works well. I rolled the whole thing outside yesterday into the sun to promote a nice full cure. And it feels really good now. So I think we're ready to try to pry this thing off the table. We'll see how well that goes. Any bets? Here we go. Oh, I got a little bit under there already.
And there we go. One fiberglass sheet. <laughs> so we'll go put this in now and see if it's laying somewhat reasonably flat. I don't know. This is a bit of an experiment. All right, so this would fit in like so. And now my idea would be to glue it down along these three edges and then that gap there, I would push up from the bottom. Be really honest with you, I'm not super happy with the way this is working out. This is predictably flimsy. I just think I'm on the wrong track here. So I wanna take a step back and maybe try a different approach here. I think what we'll try and do is use that template to cut out a piece of foam. That's the right shape. Here's a scrap here, and it will take a gentle curve. Let's try again with some foam, get rid of this. I'll keep this piece of laminate. This might come in handy somewhere down the line. I just don't think it's gonna happen right now in here. Okay, back to the drawing board. So let's try again now with this piece of foam. This is the Divinacell H100. So let's get this cut out and fit back into that hatch. And hopefully this will take up that curve nicely and look okay. Uh, we'll see about when we get it up there. I think it's gonna fit in there just fine. So this piece now will fit in the gap and I have sculpted the edges a little bit to make up for those rounded portions in the bottoms here. So it does fit nicely around the perimeter. And now we have a little bit of an issue at the front here because of the crown. I'll show you here what I mean. The reason that there's no fiberglass flange like there is back here up forward is that I had originally planned to cut that foam back to install the hatch. So. Uh, I had intentionally covered over it in that area. Now, with us covering the hatch over with foam, that presents a bit of a problem because I don't have a good edge to glue to there. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide this piece up. Ooh, good catch. Up inside there underneath, and that's going to give me the right shape to glue the foam on top. So we'll put a bit of peel ply on this so that if there is any resin on there, it's easy to prepare the surface. And then that should get it all glued together. So when this is done, there will no longer be that forward hatch. So we're about to say goodbye. And now I found that these blue steel weights do a great job of holding the piece right where I want it, nice and flush. So we'll use those, but to counteract the weight, I'm just gonna put a couple of braces down below to make sure that when this all hardens up, the shape is just like we want it. Tracing out this lower flange gives me a good idea of where I need to spread the unthickened epoxy. And I took it a step further and actually put clear packing tape on all of the unglued surfaces. So I'm hoping that this is going to limit the spread of epoxy when we go to put this piece in. And now it doesn't stick super well to the foam, but I'm hoping that this will work. We'll see how it goes. I'm anticipating a lot of glue squeeze out around that inner flange and the foam. And so to protect the area below the hatch, I wanna put a new cover down. So we've made this one out of OSB and it's just a cheap, easy solution for now that I can stand on and it will capture any drippings without really too much worry. And then later on, we can use appropriate material for a more permanent solution. But I think that's everything. So we are ready now to get going, gluing this piece and let's do it.
It's been a couple of days, so that foam should be ready to check out. Let's see how it looks. We've been holding the temperature above 60 Fahrenheit so that that epoxy cures up nice and strong. And you might've noticed that when I put that in, I actually pulled it out at one point and then checked out the squeeze out, put more in and then placed it in a second time. So sort of like laying tile, I guess. Sometimes you pick one up and see if it has good coverage. And I had a couple of spots it didn't. So I wanted to make sure it was really good squeeze out all throughout there because that bottom is a little ripply. Well, let's get into it and see how it looks. Okay, so there's definitely gonna be just a little bit of sanding required just to fare off that little glue joint that came popping through. And there's just a little bit of unevenness in a couple of spots, but you know, nothing major. Now let's see if we can get this tape off. Let's see if that's stuck on there too much. See a little bit still stuck there on the edge. So that'll get sanded off, but definitely don't wanna leave that. It's interesting coming in here now and seeing just this orange glowing ceiling tile. Kind of funky. Get a light on in here. So let's pull down this little brace that we installed, take the other braces off, strip the tape, clean it up. Looking around in here, we have quite a lot of squeeze out, especially on this aft end. And I knew that there was going to be an extra amount there. That's why I applied a lot of epoxy in there because I didn't want to have any air pockets. We're going to have to grind this back a little bit now so that we can get some glass fared in here to fair over this hole. I'm gonna have to do a little bit more cleaning because there's still quite a bit of that old gel coat on the ceiling in here. So I think one more time we'll have to put some plastic over this door. I'll get suited up and once and for all, we'll take care of all that grinding in here. I wish I would've just done it in one fell swoop, but uh, I didn't. So we're doing it again. <laughs> Well, I can see we have a little bit of a problem here. We have um, a lot of epoxy that's squeezed out underneath that brace, which is what we wanted it to do. But we have epoxy cured on either side of the tape. <laughs> so we're gonna have to probably break that away. We'll clean it up, but we'll get it fixed. Putting the tape on the foam, maybe I don't do that next time. I'm not sure. Let me know what you think. I'm pleased with the way that's turning out. So now we are gonna put the lower skin on the bottom of that panel, but before we can do that, we need to rough up the edges, taper in some of that old glass and smooth things out so we can get a nice scarf joint to that. And so it's time to put on the fun Tyvek suit again. And before we do that, I'd love it if you'd hit that like button for me right down there. Appreciate it so much, here we go. Thankfully that work is now complete and I remember why I didn't do all of that earlier. And it's just because it's terrible work and I just was tired of working overhead and sanding and grinding old gel coat off of fiberglass. Not a lot of fun, but it's over now and it looks good. It came out really well. The flange between the original fiberglass and the new foam looks good. We've got a nice transition there. So we're ready to cut out some glass to accept that. So I am completely soaked because I was working in that Tyvek suit. So I'm gonna get a quick change on and then we will be back to working on that glass. 
All right, much better. So now we have here three layers of 1708 glass to go on the underside of that deck skin. You'll notice the top two I have here upside down. That's because when I do get it to sanding those, inevitably I just wanna be taken off the CSM and not the main fibers. We also put the second layer, I turned it on a 45 when I was cutting out. So this gives me a 090 layout instead of the plus minus 45. So they're alternating now. So we have the fibers running in four directions and that's gonna give it a little bit more extra strength. I used my clear piece of plastic here to get that shape and we just traced this out, held it up on the underside of the deck with some really sticky two-sided carpet tape so I could trace out the lines, get the three shapes that I wanted and then we progressively cut this down to size as we went. We've already hot coated the underside of the foam with some unthickened epoxy. That's been up there for a little while, just at that gel stage. You might have noticed that we had a couple of gouges in the foam and even some holes that came through on the epoxy from the previous step. I think we're in really good shape though. There's not too many of them and they're not too big. Anyway, we're gonna stuff a bit of thick epoxy in those and we'll just put a little bit of that on the underside to give it a really nice sticky surface to stick this up to. And we'll probably wet these out still down here on the bench. Hopefully the thickened epoxy that we put this up with helps to hold these up such that we don't need to do the vacuum bag this time. I'm gonna to try to avoid that on this round. Here we go. That's looking really good. So we used the fin roller that time very, very carefully, made sure we pushed out all those air bubbles. And I even used that inspection light to make sure in between laminations that there was no bubbles hiding anywhere. So I think we're in really good shape there. I am kind of left wondering after a couple of overhead laminations, if it's better to wet them out on the table and bring them up or to wet them out in place. I think either way, it's a total wrestling match and you're gonna get really, really messy. But uh, I'm happy that that job is done now. Maybe I'll try it the other way next time. And we'll see how that goes. But that's going to need a little bit of time now to cure up. So come back next time to see how that looks. And if you're new to the channel, I'd love it if you check out this playlist here. That'll get you caught up from the very beginning of the story. And there's a subscribe button right there for you if you'd like to keep on watching this channel. See you all next time. Check out this playlist right here. That'll get you caught up from the very beginning. It's the other way around. It's doing so good. Is that the ice cream man? <laughs>